This has been a much better matchup than I think any of us really anticipated here, but it, I think you said it best at the very start of the set. It's the battle of the team that can end, who's had so much trouble finishing these games out versus the team that hasn't had that opportunity to really end a game yet here, but both these teams are doing so well. And I was going to say, both these teams have actually succeeded where all their predecessors have failed. Armada previously couldn't end a game. Well, they did just now. Atletico, they couldn't win a game. Well, they did just earlier on, and now... Well, it's everything to play for in these picks and bands. I'm curious where Regan is going to go here because as good as that outwash was, for certain moments in the game, the Vulcan was just that much better. They need to prioritize his pick before secondary band phase. This is interesting, though, that Armada have decided to go for the first pick. So Atletico have decided to go for the second pick option. Game one, they were first pick. Game two, they were first pick. Game three, they want the second pick now. Is that to try and take something away from Armada here. It could be taking a page out of Armada's book because after losing game number one, Armada elected to go for the second pick, leaving uh, the three OP gods open so that way they can get both the Pele and the Erlong Shen after the Mercury was first picked out of Atletico. And now again, we see the Pele has been banned away by Atletico, so they're not going to give it to Armada very wisely. They're banning the Mercury, which just leaves the Arlong Shen open for Armada. I can almost assume that this is going to go their way. We have seen Armada run it in the support role as well, if required. It's not necessarily going to be in the jungle, but it's definitely going to be the first pick with how this is on. But Atletico must know this was a situation they were put into. It's clean and cut like butter, honestly. It's either the Ardeo or the Odin pick when you see an Erlong Shen on the table, and it's going to be the Ardeo instead alongside the Terra. The Mega Tanks here, J Mac. Are you happy with these? Big girls are going to be on the team of Atletico. I think this is a great one to shut down and uh, to really shut down Arlong Shen here. Yeah, really shuts down mobility. Also, the amplification from Terra always causes problems with our ultimate. It goes under the radar in the team fights from a spectator and a viewer point of view. But that Terra ultimate does so much in the team fight, not just defensively, but offensively. I believe as well. it's about 10% damage swing on both sides. So you're looking at 20% total of a swing fight. So I think that overall, uh, the more backline penetration you have, the better. And we were talking about the lack of frontline presence that Atletico had in game number two. Well, that's already been adjusted in this last and final game. Awkward situation then for Armada because they're staring down, as we said, Arteo and Terra here for their lineup. And he's trying to pick gods that can cause some problems or at least sustain against this. Sobek is definitely one that I'm thinking of the back of my head as someone that can just catch 22, you know, catch a situation where you can just deal with everything. Sobek, Odin were kind of the two I was thinking of here, but mm, they're looking Odin's at Opwash. Opwash Ultimate does have that anti-heal on it now, so it is a good option to go up against both these Guardians and yeah. Athena. Just a strong pick in general. The last time she was banned away in the second phase, so Armada's going to grab her early. Totally, everyone underestimates Opwash with that stun because of the sustain that comes through from the gods, and Tara's going to be giving that sustain to a team without even realizing it when she just drops that monolith down. This could be really cause problems. Or even the Earth and Fury getting those little rocks around them will get them a heal if they just strip them away. So that's another idea that the Alpwash will try to look to counteract. Don't, can't forget that Ardeo has some self-sustain under herself. I was a little bit concerned when I saw that Chiron hover I, there because that was like more healing, right? I was too. I was, Chiron is probably the worst god in the game to go up against an Alpwash because like how we mentioned, Terra just kind of unintentionally gives it. Chiron does it even worse because it it's does. in his passive. Cast an ability, here's a heal. Well, it's not that bad if you think about it because the radius is only 30 units, so not all all the time you're going to be able to heal an sure. ally that's close enough to the healing. And even if the, you're going to mitigate some of that healing, get the stun off, at the end of the day, it's about cleansing the Athena oh, And sure. against an Alpwash, the Chiron ultimate is so far away, you don't even have to be close to the huge AoE of the crypts. So with that, it'll be the Hanshiman instead. Atletico, by the way, the Odin, recognizing themselves, as you were mentioning, j -Man could cause some problems with Armada at look for that. But already with an Erlang Shen and Athena, kind of tricky to fit it in the composition. Will be the Ratatoska ban against Hexi here. Really shutting down some of the jungle options this time round for Atletico. And I really love this Ratatoska band. Texi did so well with it in the set up against Trifecta, and it was just destructive. I mean, th this Ratatoska has been insane. Yeah, it's caused a couple of problems for them. Maybe another jungle ban here, Tully. Was that what you'd expect? Yes, if they're looking to make sure that Kofi B is not going to be really Second contested, then trying to make sure that the Nine Turns Blessing not going to get negated by any of that anti-healing. We've not seen Circa in a little while. How about a dodgy selection here? Would that be a good situation? I'm not sure if that's in his style or wheelhouse, but the Susano makes sense because there's going to be more crowd control. The mobility to try to either engage the Erlong Shun or just to run away from him is how Texi is going to need to readjust his game plan. Well, we mentioned the jungles are going to be important in this one at the moment. It does seem to be lining up with Erlang Shen versus Susano in that position. Armada now hovering over Izanami. Now, we've not seen too much Izanami on and off through the season, mainly Splice's Cyclone Spin. 
has been running that a little bit in the duo lane to some success. We have seen some Izanami in the beginning of Season 5 where teams were like kind of experimenting around with some proxy farming. It's a very risky idea to go because of how telegraphed it is with her escape. The proxy is the big reason that you really go for the Izanami. Mean, you get that early, early pressure so you can start invading those jungle buffs very early on into the game. It works well with Athena because they do couple well to together to have some great clear, but once you get to that late game, that's where it kind of gets a little rough because, like you said, it's a telegraph dash. It's very easy to follow. Columbus hovered over, then Achilles, then back to Achilles again, I should say, for Armada at the moment. Will he be looking this in against a lot of sustain on this team? So executes do technically prevent sustain because you kill the target. That's true, and it's going to be easy to get under that marker considering that with all the burst damage between the Opwash and the Izanami in the late game, that steroid just to give it an extra burst of damage. But we mentioned quite a bit today how well Ray gets played in that mid lane position. No outposh for him. Vulcan is available, but Vulcan into this composition, would it be okay? I think so, honestly, because Athena dashes in. Well, you're going to be able to predict that. Once you hear the animation go off, you drop the meatball immediately and prevent a lot of follow-up with the taunt. Anything else you'd like to potentially see if we don't see a Vulcan here? I'm kind of looking through the comp and I'm like, mm. Poseidon's I was terrible. actually Poseidon thinking Poseidon, Poseidon the actually. one I was really thinking towards here. Go really well against all of these gods, and Apollo as immobile as he already is, it's going to force him to get an Aegis amulet very early to prevent the Kraken. Otherwise, he's going to eat that. Uh, another big thing that one thing I really do like about this Iza is almost all of these gods. I mean, I would maybe take Hachiman off this. Are all very spam oriented gods. They want to drop their whole kit very quick. And that Dark Portal silence is going to be massive in a team fight. Maybe a Nox could go a long way, right? Like in instantly lane, disrupt the Athena. In mid lane, totally. That's so rough, isn't well, it? Well, you could just dash away. Maybe dash into your uh, jungler that's in the back line. But game number one, Regan had a good Vulcan game. Repeat in game three. Yeah, I don't see a reason not to. If it's going to be available for him, and the amount of damage he was doing that game, there were some tanky targets. This time, yeah. a couple more squishy ones mixed in there from Armada's draft. Now the draft's a lot, though. The question is, is uh, who are you going to put the curse on this time, Tolly and Jack? Myself. You're doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going home? Um, well, I think Atletico should be able to win this one, actually. Ooh. I like Vulcan here for Regan yet again. I think that despite winning game number two for Armana and having momentum here, uh, it didn't really matter for Atletico in game number two, so I'm still liking the draft a little bit more between the very first two picks of the Ardeo Terra. I think that even though Armada did get that second victory, it looked extremely similar to game number one, just minus one little bit tidbit in the team fight here. And by drafting this massive front line here for Atletico, I think that they've got this. Armada's going to take this game. That's all you guys need to know. The picks and bands have spoke for themselves. I think the initial draft, I agree with you guys. I just think Armada's going to take it. Sometimes you don't have to look at the picks and bands at all, and you just got to go with gut feeling, you know? Well, we'll see how they adapt, because I like the also style that Armada are bringing between Erlang Shen here for Coke Baby. We're going to be seeing Bra play the Achilles. So that's a lot of solo lane pressure that they can look to start abusing the blue buff. All right, then. Well, with no further ado, the final game of day two will begin. F. and Taco are standing by to bring us this Armada versus Atletico Mac. Thanks again, Hindu. Thanks again, J Mac. Thanks again, Anatoly. And here we are, the fight, the rubber match. Someone's going home. Is it the North American minor leaguers or the team from down under? We will certainly find out. A long set this has been, elongated games. Number two is a little bit short, but one was certainly one for the record books. A nice a nice defensive fight from Atletico. And I like that the analyst desk is split, Taco. I think both of these teams have kind of shown their, their prowess. At Atletico has been behind the eight ball, but has shown they can play from behind. And Armada certainly showed that they're able to kind of stomp the foot down at the same time. I'm more spooked about seeing Regan on that Vulcan one more time than anything else here so far, Tom. Atletico have already displayed that they are more than capable of playing defense as long as Regan is on the Vulcan. So uh, right now, I think the, the central focus needs to be around protecting Sops and ensuring that Sops and Cope Baby are completely on point because their burst combination can be pretty nasty. Listen, I got a chance to talk to the teams during their, their player break in between game two and three. I want to point out this invade, though. Bruh, looking for the speed buff invade by himself. Osha, he took note. And he's going to be able to fight on that one. Nice shell there already used. And this is going to be trouble. Let it go on the back end. Sybil and Benny Q running up the lane. Those Izanami basics are, are really doing it. 
this is one of those situations where hindsight's always going to be 2020. And in the case of Atletico's dual lane, Shank and Zayz should have been started out in the lane, sure, but they shouldn't have tried to contest the lane clear. Now they're forcing their mid laner to try and defend his red buff, and that's just not going to work out for them. Although it seems like Civil might have accidentally picked up that red buff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, accidentally? I don't know. Maybe he wants the extra reach damage. Is that possible? I think that was intended for Benny Q. <laughs> A little bit of a yeah. slight sidestep too far over there for Armada's support. But getting back to what I was saying, though, with Shank and Zayz, you want to start off in the lane just to prevent Armada's duo from pushing up too far because if they're able to clear right on that tower line, which is an Ami Athena can do pretty easily, then that's going to make it all too simple for them to then rotate in for the purple buff invade. Shank and Zayz missing out, I think. They were able to confirm their purple either way, simply because Sybil and Benny Q went for red, but you still miss out a little bit where you probably didn't have to. Like I mentioned before, I was uh, I was talking to the players in between their in their player break, both teams. And Armada, <clears throat> Cup was a little mad. <laughs> Cup was a little mad about game number one, but very happy about how the second one went. Atletico. Very cool, cool-minded. Sybil right now has to kind of channel that as Texi is here. They haven't seen him yet. Armada didn't see him. The dash from Athena is already down. Zayz is low, but here comes Texi. The grab is good, and Zayz puts him down. First blood and second blood for Atletico. But in the mid lane, Cope Baby takes care of business under the tower. It's a two for one, but Atletico do get the respawn first blood. Cope was cutting it close, by the way, underneath that T1 tower. Sops didn't have any more mana to continue assisting his jungler. Cope instead had to rely on the blink to get the final blow there onto Regan. But it's a good start for Armada, despite their dual lane having fallen and Benny Q's beads being expended. I would probably prefer to see my jungler up and out in front as opposed to the enemy dual lane. Red buff this time will go to Atletico. Nice job there, the dissuasion from that first blood gank, certainly going in their direction. Atletico are only concerned with Cope. They were very level-headed, and they said, you know, game two is kind of out of control, and they identified that both game one and game two, Cope was the main culprit. They were worried they wanted to keep Cope off of the power picks. They didn't want to give him the Merc or the Pele or anything. The Arlong Shan, though, Taco, still a strong selection. Still a scary selection also, uh, but I was rather impressed by Texi still managing to find that early gank rotation. Yeah, Cope on the Arlong Shen is certainly going to be a threat. Let's take a look at that kill where he dives the mid lane tower and gets his team kind of back here. Sops in trouble. Aegis is good. And that's going to be totally fine. So Cope got that dive kill. Here it is, the replay coming our way. What a fantastic job here. Cope maybe just going to show up and... Kind of go for Regan. And that that's where the blink is. See, I was under the impression that Cope might have gone for the blink a little bit sooner to initiate underneath the tower, but getting the turtle form off is really important there because if he accidentally goes Mink, he's not going to have that shield to absorb that tower blow. Shouts to INAP for letting us get a second look at that one. And a great job from Cope. That's, a, again, I said it ad nauseum in game number two, and the same rings true for game number three. If Armada are going to win, it's going to be off of Cope, who's doing it again. Nice knock him from Texi, but it's not enough. Sybil from the left side puts him down, ties the game two to two. The dangers of Athena, that damage mitigation can be difficult to control, especially when it's running right on top of you. I don't even think Cope was able to connect at first either with that initial blink in. It, it looked like he might have been slightly off the mark with the turtle form, and yet they were still able to salvage that skirmish. Yeah, nice, uh, nice clean, or excuse me, nice recovery from a not so clean fight. Let it go on their red buff. Looks like they're getting invaded here by Armada. Three players deep. Sybil finds the taunt on the shank. There's Regan firing the shot, bringing Sops down to 60%. Red buff goes down, but it's let it go chase the enemy out of the jungle. The target focus right now, though, for Armada is exactly where it needs to be. I don't want to see Regan happily farming away safely in this mid lane. He needs to be under pressure at all points in time if Armada really want to make sure this Vulcan doesn't become a problem yet again like he was in game number one. Yeah, not at all. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. We heard the picks and bans conversation from the analyst desk. 
And I like this decision that Atletico made in their last selection. You saw them go deep into the bank time. I'm with the analyst desk. I think Poseidon might be the better pick on paper. And I think the conversation was, do we go, whether it was Poseidon or not, I think the conversation was, do we go with God better for the composition or just let Regan tear it up like he did before? Zop's in trouble, so he empties the Crips. And Texie gonna join the Ghosts. Oh, baby. Making sure he can help out his team. Beautiful play there. And Saves with the turnaround. Still gets ulted. Benny Q looking for the basics, but he can't find them. But guess who's up top, Taco? Zays is dead by rights. No chance of him surviving. Cope Baby, every single escape route cut off effectively by Armada. That's the kind of staggering rotation you want to see from your teammates. And nicely done by Benny Q to force out the mounted archery. Yeah, that was, that was a really, really strong play there from Armada. The hunter gets the 1v1, and then Sybil comes through with help of the jungle and finishes it off. I think the main problem there for Zayz is it looked like he wanted to aggress for a second there, realized that the auto attacks from Benny Q while he was underneath that one proc steroid from Mizunami, too much damage. Did not want to tango any longer, but couldn't bail himself out in time. Oh, she's going to be knocked up by Bruh. Brought down to half HP. You're a, you're a carry player. You've played the Hunters. That's kind of your natural position here, Taco. Talk to me a little bit about the differences. Stops this time, has no ultimate, but he has an Athena. Uh, about Izanami, because those, those pass-through basics certainly change the dynamic. If you're going to play as Anami and go for the lifesteal route, I, I think you're going to tend have a tendency to see more Blood Forge over everything else just because Transcendence, Blood Forge, oh, I had to stop myself for a second there. I thought that Shank might have been in a little bit of danger, but seems like Empty the Crypts was unnecessary. Beautiful Aegis, though, is going to keep Sops alive. Go, baby, looking for the play, but it's one on three. He doesn't seem to mind. Trades out with Shank. Coke and Texie fall down. Taunt from Sybil as Sops is still here. Meanwhile, Zayz's rotation is strong. He's got a horse and Benny Q doesn't, but Sops stays alive. I love the carry rotation, but just not fruitful. Heavenly Banner just off the mark as well. Good jukes there from Sops, but Benny Q doesn't seem like he's done with this just yet. That ward, or both of these wards, are bound to have spotted him out by now. Zayz knows Benny Q is lurking all the while, bruh. Bullying Osha away from his own blue buff. A much better game for Bruh here. Here he's actually slam dunking it. He's two levels ahead of Osha. Uh, he's got the itemization online as well. Went for the boots rush directly into the heel from abilities. So a nice play here from Bruh just to use this pressure pick that we identified in picks and bans and actually get it. This two level lead is really big. This two level lead is exactly what you want to see out of the Achilles also because it can be really devastating when you're trying to contest your blue buff farm as Texie, for example, <laughs> but you're just not going to have that opportunity. Just like Zayz won't have any opportunity to try and counter initiate onto Benny Q. This is much scarier if I'm an Atletico fan. I see Yuzi and Mingyu cheering from down, sat, down under. Definitely give them a shout out. Code baby, however. In some trouble in the invade. Sybil will show up, and now the collapse. This is not a good spot for Cope to be in. Regan takes him down. Sybil gonna be stunned up. Shank finds a secondary stun. Sybil rooted every piece of ground control. And the punishment is good. Regan with the double kill on the Vulcan. Great recognition, though, from Benny Q. Not only is he gonna get the T1 tower and duo in response, but he also stripped away the entirety of Athletic Ghost Jungle on that side of the map. So, sure, you're able to make plays over in solo and help catch Regan back up again with a nice double kill. But it does come at a price. And I don't think that the gods who currently have leads on Armada are exactly the ones you want to see if you're in Athletic Ghost shoes. That's certainly true. <laughs> that is absolutely true. So, again, shout outs to the Yoshi, the, the Oceana community. They're at home watching, rooting on their team. Atletico, as we said, the first OCE team to actually win a game here on the international stage. And they're on the verge of winning their the only set we've seen them win. They're playing strong. But this game number three, Taco, I think Armada are playing harder than they did in game number one. They've had the lead for the majority of the set. This just feels heavier. This feels like a stronger punch from the minor league North Americans. It's almost like they were holding something back in game one. 
And now in games two and three, Cope Baby seems to have rallied his forces right behind him. Atletico, though, just as many swings as they keep taking, they're still throwing a couple back here, and I, I like to see it from Atletico. That's, that's, you know, that's the Oceana mentality. Stops here, two on one, knock up Regan. He sends it far, so Texi gets him close, but the punishment from Armada. Cope misses the knock up, but he gets the pin on a Texi. It's one for one. Gets everybody's beads in the process, though. Regan will stay alive for the moment. And that was also some serious quickness, by the way, on the response. Preemptive beads straight into the backfire, creating space away from that turtle form on Cope Baby. Oh, bro, misses the execute. And Osha under the tower lives to see another day. Cope one more time finds himself in the enemy jungle, has help from Sybil. And Benny Q looking for the red buff this time around. Goes to Armada. And Atletico playing it rather safe. And now I want to take this chance to kind of elaborate on that Izanami question you asked me earlier in terms of build paths for her. She is probably one of the more flexible hunters in terms of what you can and can't buy. I think that Blood Forge is usually considered ideal because it's not like Devos where you need to rely on single hit auto attacks. The boomerang effect, you're still getting benefit if you find a last hit on the kill because you just get the passive. Texi, a little bit of danger there from Bra, but the worst part about it all is Atletico being zoned away from this gold fury. This seems like a, a mistake by Atletico, but I think that is, that's a service level thought. Armada did a great job at zoning Atletico away. The, the Atletico, it's funny, usually we see the zone much closer to the objective. Armada knew that they could take it with just two players, and they pushed players all the way to the lane and keep Atletico even out of the jungle. So uh, again, a fantastic play there by Armada. Gives them an early objective, and they're 3,700 gold up. And 6,000 experience in the lead also. So despite the kill score still I reading seven to six, paid. it's probably not feeling that way for Atletico. Benny Q also should be close to finishing up that Wind Demon and having the passives of both Poison Star and Wind Demon. It's going to be really difficult now for Zayce to continue to run away from this Izanami. The burst damage from the crit can be very overwhelming. So he doesn't have any power, though. The reason you don't need we... it. What was that? You don't need it on the on the Izanami. Not at this stage, at least, because no one's really had a chance to buy de enough defenses yet for it to be relevant. Yeah, because every time, the reason we see Transcendence and Devo Gloves almost every single time is because they provide a high power bank. All that thought as the 1v1 is live. Benny Q versus Zay's. Crits are good. Benny Q down to 35%. Zay's healing up. Right side Pyromancer does get taken down. And Benny Q, three and a half levels above Zay's, actually loses the 1v1. It will be forced back. It's, it's part of the risk first reward of building this way on the Izanami. Kind of weird that he's not finishing off that Wind Demon. Seems like he might have recognized his lack of power on some of those crits and maybe feels a little bit more comfortable trying to lean towards an Executioner instead. Needs some attack speed. Sops needs some life. He's been a little bit late. Blink forward from Cope. Knock up miss. Taunt on to Shank. Taunt two on to Shank. Over the wall is the blink from Bruh. Ultimate's a little early, so he doesn't get the execute. And Shank's going to find the stun and walk away. That could not have been better played, but now here comes the counter rotation from Atletico. They want blood, and they're looking for Bruh first and foremost. Bruh's going to be the first to fall, and Day still pushing forward. Taunt from Sybil as Texi and everybody looks for the return kill. It's four on three in the middle lane. And the Terra ultimate was used. They'll let it go. Go ahead and find the one for none. That's a win for Oceana. Incredible for Zayz to have lived as long as he did. Regan, though, going to get taunted back in. That'll be the end of his beads as we know it. But Texi, now it's his time to shine. But Cope Baby going to stop him right in his tracks. That burst damage out of the Erlang. Sybil knocked up. Shank trying to find the damage. And a beautiful Aegis from Benny is going to, or excuse me, Sops negates the damage from Regan's ultimate, which was on point. Sops was in the bullseye, but a quick Aegis saves the life of the Opwash player. Oh, one and five so far for Sops. He's been an interesting player to watch this, this set. I, I've really enjoyed some of what he's done. And then he's also kind of put himself in odd positions. That divine ruin rush on the Alpwash has just been devastating for Atletico's composition, I feel. They were really leaning towards that small little bit of self-survivability off of the off of Osha's heels and even Shank on the RDO, but 
hasn't really had a chance to come to fruition just yet. Sops has been there just spamming cooldowns all over the place, and that's kind of all you're looking to do on Outwash to begin with. Yeah, I mean, you're just trying to hit all your buttons at the same time and make sure that everybody's going to be hit by the giant damage. That's what Opwash does. He's just supposed to be the damage bot, and he's doing it so far. Sybil finds the double taunt. There's the corpses. Texi barely alive. Bruh's gonna wrap around from the right hand side. There's the ultimate. Too short. Knock him is good. Bruh taking the tier two tower. Texi's still safe. Bruh's in trouble, but here comes Zayz and Armada. They do a bunch of damage and they take a tier one tower, but they're not able to find any kills just yet. I think that Zayz's mounted archery was also cut short because of the corners on those walls. I think that if that had actually managed to connect there with Bra and Sybil, we might have seen a little bit of a pushback from Atletico inside of that T2 tower range. Instead, Armada able to walk away with their winnings, which is the T1 tower, but no picks. Oh, Cope caught up trying to back. There's a taunt, so he's going to heal up in just a moment. But the ultimate popped, and Cope dropped. Eight and eight. Let's let it go. Find the kill. I don't know if I call that a lazy back. I don't know if I want to be mad at Cope for that. That's just a strong play from Atletico catching the jungler. I don't, I don't really fault Cope for being that far up. Exactly. He, he had the right mentality. He knew Gold Fury was about to respawn, was just trying to push out the wave to have the creeps in their favor. But now, since he's dead for another 20 seconds or so, not even factoring in the time it's going to take him to get back to this part of the map, Atletico, as soon as his Gold Fury is up, they need to make a decision here. T1 Tower, go for the fight, go for the Gold Fury, something. They were looking for the Tier 1, but Armada's going to fight back. Damage onto Zayz brings him down to 40%. Sops is a sitting duck, and Shank's going to toss him some bread. Bring it over the top, going to miss completely, and that's a one for one. Bra makes it a two for one as he takes down the mid lane mage. Texi looks like he's going to be next. Taunt's good. And Armada have 11. And Cope Baby knows he doesn't even need to come back to the engagement. Just going to take his sweet time. Farms out his speed buff. Now starting to go towards his right hand side of the map because not only do Armada have an opportunity here. Whoa. To look for the Gold Fury. I thought they were going to go for Gold Fury. I'm not going to lie. But no, it seems like Fire, Fire Giant is all that they're interested in. And, and I like this call. I think they've got more than enough time to look for this. You can see Bra occupying the remaining Atletico members on the left side. They're going to get Fire. And they're going to get it for free. And Bra might be able to take the one versus two. I'm not so sure about that one. Nice stun out onto Osha. But Bra is just entirely too low by the time he took that initiation there. Good distraction factor, though. I doubt that Atletico was really expecting Armada to make a Hail Mary call like that for the Fire Giant, but boy, did it work out for them. And now, with the Fire Giant having been stripped away, Atletico know that they're forced in for this Gold Fury. They will manage to confirm that one, which is probably the best case scenario right now for Atletico. You don't have to worry about Bro with Fire. So when the push does start to happen from Armada towards these T2 structures, Atletico can probably just look to prioritize targeting out Sops or Benny Q. I think that both of them have kind of gotten away with murder sitting in the back line. And I doubt that they're going to let up anytime soon. Sops has absolutely gotten away with a lot here. You know, it's it's been really interesting. Right now, he's about to finish his Gem of Isolation, it looks like. And that's really where Opwash just gets... I don't know what, brutal, Gross. Ob obnoxious, disgusting, just generally annoying and a thorn in your side. You're already pissed off at how much damage you're taking from him, and now you're moving basically in reverse. It's like being the guy that picks Nox in Arena. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Or Loki. Uh -huh. Shout out to all my Loki haters out there. No, Loki, Loki's not that bad in Arena, though. Is he not? You just kill him. I, I haven't played Arena since 2013. I'm serious. I'm Mr. Esports. This is what it's about. It's about the conqueasy, baby. Atletico now 20 minutes in. They're only down one kill, but they're down a ton of gold. What is that? Seven, six and a half thousand gold. And a ton of experience as well. Armada lined up to look for the tier two tower on the left-hand side. Cope pushing up by himself in the mid lane. Bro, looking for the flank. All five members of Atletico grouped up on the left. And that's going to give Cope the tower for free. They're trying to make the rotation, but Bro, the lone bouncer. What a play by Armada. They try to bring the team to the middle lane, and that opens up the left tower. 
Taco, that was really pretty. I don't think that Atletico wanted to contest on those T2s anyway. I do appreciate, though, that they bothered placing Ward Vision to begin with because I feel like they might have tried to step up, seeing yeah. that there was only three members at first. But the Ward going to spot out Bruh and let them know that this might have been a setup. Atletico is a great defensive team. They're looking for their opponent to make a mistake. Bruh might have done that by walking too deep, but Osha's already down. Great taunt by Sybil. Lighting up his damage dealers. He'll deal some damage himself. The support has three kills to his name. Three, two, and six for Sybil here. Cope, though. He's got six in total. Zaze's beads get shown up thanks to Sybil one more time. Four players with fire pushing up in the middle lane. So many actives have already been burned, though, from Atletico's carries. They're trying to hold on here, but Regan finally gets a nice Vulcan ultimate, except it's no damage. Too many Aegis's. Benny Q gonna pick up Shank. Sops barely left standing, but he's still alive. He'll be able to sustain back into the action as Sybil tanks up this mid Phoenix. Atletico's gonna have to watch another Firebird go down. Two Phoenixes on the ground. And Armada looking for the retreat. They've got 34 seconds left of Fire Giant, but they don't want to test it. They've seen how strong Atletico can be on the defensive end. And they're going to walk back, go back to base, buy some stuff, and look for the Fire Giant for a second time. Armada, they, they know what kind of a lead they have, though. And for good reason, they should keep pushing into Atletico as often as possible. Do not allow this team any chances to farm. That was part of their mistake in game one, I feel, yeah. in that they were only going for those Phoenix Sieges around the Fire Giant buff. And whenever they didn't have Fire Giant buff, you never really saw them pushing up or looking to pressure out Atletico. But now they have ample opportunity and time to continue trying to aggress into this Oceanic squad. You know, it's interesting. We tossed a, we, we, we tossed a lot of, of nonsense at Benny Q for kind of throwing that game number one by going blink, and, and that ultimately lost the game. But I do want to give Armada a shout-out because that wasn't the only variable. As you mentioned, it was their play, letting Atletico get a little bit more than they should have. That allowed Atletico to farm up, find some defensive stops. Game number two, though, Armada made the adjustment and dove when they got the chance. They didn't give our Atletico the chance to breathe because they realized this is a strong team, and if you give them an inch, they will take well, the kilometer, they're Oceana. So looking at what, what Atletico is doing here, I mean, this is a great shout to Armada, adjusting and adapting their gameplay on the fly. They're saying, look, we recognize that Atletico are a defensive oriented team, and if we allow them to, they will just beat us on the back foot. So Armada are going heavier, stronger, faster, and Atletico look like they can't keep up this time. They're just running at Atletico with pressure in every single lane. It, it didn't matter if it was duo, mid, solo, all three sides of the map. Atletico just were not able to take winning matchups into these pressure picks from Armada. And Pure pressure. I think this also comes down largely to Bra executing this Achilles wonderfully. Yeah, Bra has had a strong game. One, two, and five doesn't do him justice. Look at him here on the left-hand side, just keeping Texi uninvolved. Regan over the top again. His damage ages out. Sybil provides his ult for the damage reduction. Mid lane, down. Right side, down. Left lane, soon to be re respawning. And Armada shifting over to the la that left side. Or are they? Are they going to leave Sops by himself? This is a mistake. Texi takes it and pops Sops. The rest of Armada going directly towards the Titan. And let it go five players strong. It's a five on four plus the Titan. This is tough for Armada, but again, they know they have to go. Armada want picks, but I think they kind of just forgot. Sops is a little bit slower than the rest of them and leave their Alquash out in no man's land. Texi though, seizing the opportunity instantly. Yeah. Well played to the Oceanic Jungler. That's exactly what he's got to do. You take what you can get. Perfect example. We, we just mentioned it. If you, if you give Atletico a tiny window, they're going to jump right through it. Beautiful taunt from Sybil though. As Armada looks for the left side Phoenix one more time, down it will go as soon as it came up. Bra on the back line in some trouble. Benny Q on the front line in some trouble. Osha trying to take up the carry. Texi dealing the damage and chasing out the Aegis from Benny. Texi going right back in, but there's the damage. Cope baby, dealing it back. It's one for one.
You can't forget about Bra. He's been here all by his lonesome for so long. I doubt that Armada are going to be able to look for the game-ending finish here, but they certainly want to keep this mid-Phoenix suppressed and out of commission. Cope Baby still looking to harass Zayz, and he's going to find him in the end here. Zay is not able to be protected from Shane. Cope Baby, the one-man wrecking crew, has help from Sybil. Here comes the Athena. Cope trying to deal with Osha. So tanky. Bra, back from the fountain, fully charged. Three kills in a row for Cope Baby. Bra takes down Regan. Shank inside the fountain. Armada, here comes Sobs. That's going to be the damage. 26 minutes on the clock. The minions are walking in. Sybil's here. Armada are four players strong. The Titan is going to go down. The Minor Leaders send Oceana back down under. Well played to Armada there. Cope Baby. Getting his squad to refocus games two and three. And I think that a lot of this charge stems from Cope Baby's leadership. This is Cope's team. This is Cope's team. In game, out of game, and in between. Uh, we just saw the man's will in that <laughs> Titan room. Everybody, he's like, look, I I'm going to fight until we win this game. That's exactly what he said. That's exactly what they did. And Armada walk away with their heads held high. And Atletico's, they, they've got no reason to look down either. Keep in mind, this is still a historical set for the Oceanic squad, being able to find their first ever land victory win here against Armada. I was very impressed with their ability to win game number one. Uh, again, it wasn't, sometimes when we see these victories, they're surprise strategies, they're kind of off the top, it, very quick, 18 minutes, oops, we messed up, let's just get a restart. That was a win that they earned. And I think that's something that you go home, you take back, and sure, you look at the tape, you look to improve, but you gotta hang your hat on that game number one. I'm not, I am not equal opportunity guy. I don't sit up here and talk about how well the loser played and how we're all happy here, but I gotta give credit where credit's due. Atletico looked strong. Atletico did the thing. They put everything out there on the line today, and. Sure, it didn't pan out with a set victory win, but they should definitely be proud of their mental resilience and player resilience yeah. during that game one. Without a doubt. Impressive stuff, but ultimately it is Armada that goes ahead and takes it home. Maybe just Cope. <laughs> Maybe it's just Cope that takes it home. He certainly looks good. My unofficial MVP for absolute damn sure. That's it. It's over. Armada takes it home one more time. Let's break it down with Hindu. I don't think you mean to. Yeah, it's Cope. It really is just Cope. He will get the MVP for the day because uh, he was the one standout player on the Armada squad that played consistent throughout. Honestly, that first blood at the very get-go, or at least one of the first kills because there was some action in the dueling at the same yeah. time that Atletico was managing to get off first, but Cope, recognizing the strengths of Erlang Shen, basically pins out Regan outside the tower line and then tower dives immediately after. It was a great execution play and after that first kill, continues to focus out Regan with the blink. I think the big thing about that so far, J Mac, is the start of every single game. Atletico seems to show signs of life and get off to an interesting one, but Armada always seems to come back and get control of the game in all three of those games. Armada just continuing to pull through, and really, I think it is off the back of Cope here. In game number one here, I mean, it was just back and forth, back and forth. Yep. They finally get control, but they keep pushing and pushing. It's not working out here. But in, the, in this game number three, they figured it out what it took to finally break the base. It was make sure that Regan is as far back as possible. Yep. Aegising every single one of the Vulcan ults that came through is the big thing, is they waited till their relics were back on to fight. I mean, buying Aegis is definitely a start to deal with a Vulcan too. I do agree with that one. But not only that, I do agree with your opinion about what they did to Regan. They really focused him all game. Cope was there time and time again looking for that Vulcan. It was difficult to run away from both Cope on the Erlang Shen and then also Bra on the Achilles. Cope was able to really make things happen in the entire set on the Mercury here in game number two, but in game number three specifically, this Vulcan uh, couldn't really make anything happen because of that early deficit. Yeah, these are the MVP for the whole set, because as you can see, Cope got a plenty of kills for himself, playing the carry rolls consistently throughout this set as well. Now, obviously, Taco and Tom on the cast, they were talking about Atletico's performance overall. It was solid. It was a step up from what we've seen previously from the Oceanic regions before. But in a vacuum, I mean, this was a minor league team that they took on today and still fell a little bit short.
Yeah, it's not going to be an easy task at the end of the day because Armada has plenty of experience in terms of the online portion. Scrimming against certain SPL teams sure. heading into this land, whereas Oceana, with the time zone difference, with the ping difference, don't have that same luxury. Well, I wonder if this one actually does move on in the lower bracket as well to face off opposition later on. I believe it's either LG or Obey who wins that set later on. We'll go into the bracket about that overall. Anything stand out to you at all in the day, j -Mac, that you can think of that was really like a moment to remember? I honestly think this is the set to remember. This is the set to watch back, especially if you want to learn how to break the base or save your base. Watch this matchup here because this is a, tell a telltale of how this season really has gone through. It's been a really interesting end to the day. But before we go, Coat Baby standing by for an after game interview. How's it going, guys? We're sitting here with uh, the savior, I mean the jungler, Coat Baby, and uh, Benny Q, the carry player for Armada. Congratulations. You did just a beat out Oceana. You sent them home. Uh, first of all, Coat, this isn't your first land. Benny, what can you tell me about your experiences here at land? Um... I mean, it takes a little time to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, it feels like home. Yeah, it certainly looked uh, a little bit different in game number one. Uh, you guys made history. Actually, the first team to lose to Oceana ever. Certainly uh, something interesting. Thanks, Benny, I Thanks. want to know your feelings on that, coming from uh, the carry um, without the ages. I mean, we're, we're breaking records, right? <laughs> That's about it, I guess. Uh, I, I, I want you to be honest with me here, Benny. You bought the Blink instead of the Aegis. We were pretty mean to you on the broadcast. Yeah. Talk me through that decision-making process. Um, I buy Blink, and we went off that. But we didn't, so... Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> Cope, on the other hand, you don't look so happy about that decision. Talk to me about what the conversation was like after game number one's loss. Um... Basically, it was, uh, yeah, Benny, you're not the smartest player, but those weren't the words that were chosen. Um, and thanks for wasting our time. But, you know, we, we're going to get used to it. You know, he plays Kali, he plays, he wants to play Thor, all this these pocket picks that I'm just going to tell everybody now since we're not going to play those. So, good. <laughs> I respect it. Co, uh, I, in game, out of game, you are the leader. You are the leader of this team. And you came into the pro league kind of, you know, as a as a sort of secondary. Talk to me about the transition that you've made into your leadership position here for Armada. Um, I feel like I've always kind of been a leader, I've, like come with comms and everything. But I guess, I mean, realistically, I kind of just joined the team because they it seemed like they just needed a leader and they wanted to play with me. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think I was like a good fit for them because they didn't really have any direction, and I've kind of just grown with that too. Well, you know, in complete seriousness, I think that you uh, you absolutely do give the team direction, and I think it's very obvious there. As you move on into the later portions of the tournament, are you guys going in with your heads held high confident? What's the feeling for Armada going forward? Um, I mean, realistically, I think, you know, we're just, just going to see what happens. That's what we came in here with, and that's what we're going to leave with. So see whatever happens. Fantastic, Cope. It's been a pleasure to watch you play, Cope. Congratulations on the win, and we'll see you next time. And that's it from Armada today. That's one of the minor league teams. And in the minor league, sometimes you'll find players that will get to the rocket and in the future of the SPL and others that will, well, that'll be the highest they ever get in life. But that's it for the pro league for today. Let's have a little look at the bracket, however, and how things have all played out throughout the last two days. Tolly, J-Mac, what's your match to watch next? Which one are you really interested in? It's now? gotta be the rival versus CLG set. That one should be exciting. Rival CLG is definitely mine. My number two is Mal's and Signum, but for me, 100%, Rival CLG is going to be the big matchup for tomorrow. It's always about NA versus EU. It's always going to be that way. So look at the lower bracket, though. Armada do advance on. Their opposition will either be LG or Obey, I believe. Whereas Trifected, if you to get on my level, knocking them out there, waiting for their opposition too. As are no ping and Nocturne. So we still got a couple of the international regions still in competition. But it's all going to be about the upper bracket tomorrow. And these are the games you've got to look forward to. Yeah, I think that both of the all of those lower bracket matches should be exciting as well oh, as yeah. the tournament progresses. Because these are your wild card factor teams that you don't know really what to expect out of them every single game. Big, big day tomorrow then. 11 a.m. start time for you all. Obey versus LG to start things off. Then an all-EU matchup. 
the minor league European Insignum will take on Mouse Sports for their shot at advancing the tournament. And after that, Space Station versus SK. An affair that the Space Station fans will expect to win, whereas Rival will also be expected to win against CLG, but they didn't look so bad either. That's everything tomorrow from 11 a.m. It's been a crazy day, and we've still got another four days left to go. It's exciting, obviously, after day number one, the upset that Insignum had over Trifecta. And day number two, there were some close calls for some of these teams, but everything going the way that it was expected. Well, that is it for the broadcast today. Before we go, however, high -res tickets are still on sale. Please go and purchase them. You can come over to high -res Expo on the 16th to the 18th. Yes, that's next weekend. And see the top eight teams of Smite compete alongside Paladins and Console 2. That's right. There's four more spots, which is why we have so many teams here battling it out. You can catch the likes of Energy over there, Splice, and a couple of other teams. All right, J-Mac, close us out. <laughs> this is a damn good day of Smite. If you missed any of this, go back and watch it. But more importantly, be here tomorrow for the upper bracket matchups. I've been Jim Mac Tucker, Hindu Man, and Anatoly, and we'll see you all tomorrow at 11 a.m. HRX is brought to you by High Res Studios, iNAP, Mixer, Alienware, and Skillshot.